during this game because Mumiets can copy some cheeky stuff. Let's see some prize cards for our game one here. In the final, Roaring Mooney X, not currently accessible for Christian, although does play a Hisuian Heavy Ball. A couple of searching cards for Kim, but as long as you have access to Arvin, I think it's still going to be okay. As we have the fist bump for our finals here in Bologna, 75 minutes on the clock, and Christian is going to start off this game one here with a couple Buddy Buddy Poffin in hand, Ooh. as well as a Confe start. I mean, that is where you want to be, isn't it? You want to be starting off with Comfe and then going for those Buddy Buddy Poffin, searching out your basic Pokemon. Yeah, they've got to be 70 HP or less, but you know what? The thing you most want in the early game, that is going to be your Comfe, and Body Body Poffin will absolutely get them for you. Also means you get a good look at your deck, trying to figure out what's prized and what is available for the next couple of turns. Yeah, we're having a quick scout through. As we know, so many single prize, uh, so single copy Pokemon in the deck list and a huge range of energy in low counts, all of them. So keeping track of these throughout the game for your Mirage Gate and Super Rod usage is going to be vital here. But all things considered, it's a really good start for Christian, who is going to start taking some notes here of what is and isn't available. And uh, it really starts coming down to these early flower selecting to weave towards some of these combinations. The more flower selecting early, the better. That's why we're seeing three Comfe as our opening search here. Obviously, these are kind of the only cards you can find with Buddy Buddy Poffin, but it's so important for the Lost Zone archetype that you still need to play these Poffins because <laughs> Comfe really kickstarts your strategy. Oh, it absolutely does. And one of the things you're looking at here is, you know, you got those key numbers for your Lost Zone. Four cards on the Lost Zone, that will activate your Cramorant, that that's your early game attacker, and also seven cards in a lost zone. That is then going to activate your, uh, your Mirage Gate, at which point you can look at it and go, well, hang on a second. Now everything's available. Yeah. Now Greninja's available. Now Roaring Moon's available. Now my own Iron Hand is available. And while we're setting up, I need to correct myself. I was talking about Angelo and my yeah. championship point. I, of course, mean Christian. Christian is on over 700 championship points. Yeah, very similar story for both players, really. Yeah. These points mean a lot. Winner of this is going to absolutely... I mean, to be fair, Christian is going to break into the top 22 regardless. Second place will do it, yeah. but there is a big difference between first and second. Kim will only break in in a big way with a win in this, so that is very, very important. A pretty nice setup, all things considered. Cramorant is in the mix as well as Radiant Greninja. Let's see how Kim's start is. Well, at least a lot of Pokemon and Professor's Research. This is a pretty solid start. You can start finding Iron Crown and power up the damage of this Maridon so that you can knock out a Comfe on this first turn. This is going to be a pretty good start, all things considered. I'm not sure if we have a guaranteed way to remove this Iron Hands EX from the active position. That would probably be one of the only things we look for from this Professor's Research that's in hand, and I believe that's probably the best supporter choice, unless there was an Arvin I couldn't spot. No, it's all good. We're trying to get set up here. There is a Nest Ball. We're eyeing up a second Iron Hands here. Mm. So it's always nice. I mean, it's, it's an energy game for me here. Yeah. You need to make sure you've got enough attackers with enough energy on. If you can go nuts with your <laughs> electric generator, yeah. then yeah, you don't need Maride on. Yeah. But being able to attack, and especially into a Comfe, it's one Iron Crown, one Future Boost, or two Iron Crown. You get the KO on the Comfe and accelerate two energy at the same time. It's like a hit off a generator, or double hit off a generator. Mm. And that just that gives me that comfort feeling in the early game. But it really depends. Penzi's first couple of turns are so big, that is going to dictate what you can do and what you have to do. And just to go back to Christian for a second while we've got time, there's the first Iron Crown. Mm. Free Comfe, they're on the board. You add that to a Colrus. Christian is in, in range here of getting seven cards and having a Mirage Gate on board next turn. Yeah, and that's actually going to be huge. That's how you can be the one getting ahead, even if you use Ampy very much of your own on the 120 hit point Maridon. That's working out perfectly for you, the other opportunities would be weaving in some of your multi-prize Pokemon alongside Mirage Gate and Gusting plays as well. That's just the one copy of Boss's Orders, which really is unusable because you have to call us to reach seven, so it's looking towards that Prime Catcher as well. As Kim is going to go for double Iron Hands here on the bench as well as one crown. I believe that's one in hand, so we might be going full bench turn one here. Yeah, Techno Radar got a third Iron Hands and an Iron Crown, second Iron Crown. There is a Maride on here. <laughs> that gets the energy on. Uh, just going to thin the Iron Hands. That makes sense. Yeah. This is nice. Seven fresh cards. We need to try and find a future booster energy capsule in order to attack this turn. 
There it is. Nice. That's what you're looking for. Get that Iron Hands out the active. Give it a retreat cost of zero. And then up comes Zima right on to... Well, it's going to take a KO. We've got the two Iron Crown. The KO is on the board. Oh, you it's actually the Prime Catcher. So you are having oh. to spend an extra resource here, but you oh. are getting the job done. I was ooing because it was a prime catcher, yeah. and then I realized you were using it just as a switch. <laughs> yeah. and that is a lot less of an... I was not ooh-worthy in the end, Joe. It really wasn't. But the turn ends up being the case. It's exactly what we wanted to see from Kim on this turn one. You've initiated that prize race with a single prize Pokemon, and Iron Hands is looking more than dangerous on that next turn of the game. So pretty ideal start for both players here, which is what you want to see in a final. Yeah, every energy accelerator with Maridon is an energy that doesn't need to be hit off an electric generator. We start straight away with a Corvus's experiment. So the question is going to be, can you find a third Comfe and a couple of switching cards that will turn on that Mirage Gate? I well, mean, there's the Hooper EX that has to be kept here. That's a yeah. crucial card for the matchup. Another Colrus was found from this Colrus as well. So you might be getting rid of some crucial resources. A super Rod is going to have to be sacrificed. You don't like it, but you had to keep the energy. You had to keep the Hooper. Mm. I mean, Hooper's just an easy, easy two, two energy KO onto an Iron Hands. It's, it's, it's too good a response here. Yeah, that's mostly its purpose within the deck. Sometimes it can help out against Arceus V-Star, but it's far less of a popular card these days. It's mostly here in response to Iron Hands. And part of the reason why the Hooper EX is quite handy is that obviously that fighting type coverage that makes it so much easier for you to reach on this Pokemon. Not even going to point out the handy was a lovely little pun there, Joe. I'm Thanks. just going to let that one slide. <laughs> so we are flower selecting here. We don't have a third Comfe yet. We're looking to try and get to seven in the loss zone. That's the goal. Now we do see Greninja using its sealed cards. That is going to draw two more. Looks like we've got a switch cart and a water energy, so at least it's a switching cart. Yeah, we need to get those in the mix. I believe the other Comfe is in the loss zone, so it would have to be lost vacuum if Ooh. we can get to seven this turn that's not an ideal situation is it yeah it was just an awkward chorus earlier i think yeah you can't win them all unfortunately one in the loss zone one in the discard two on the board but lost vacuum will help to bridge that gap so what can we do here as christian if we can't reach our mirage gates and you're concerned about iron hands coming in do you just send a higher hit point pokemon in the active here to try and buy time I don't really like any situation. <laughs> Cramorant doesn't get a KO on the Maridon. No, it doesn't, and do, it doesn't do much at all. And it's absolute fodder for Iron Hand, so that is not really where you want to be. But do you really just want to put a Pokemon in the active and just let it take a hit? Because then it essentially gets into Iron Hand's range but by being hit with Maridon, while Kim accelerates a bunch of energy. That's not exactly a good position either. The Iron Bundle at least gives Kim a decision to make by pushing the Maridon out of the active spot right now. We saw that Kim had to spend Prime Catcher, which might have given Christian some information that there's no future boost energy capsule in the hand currently. Yeah, you do not use Prime Catcher if you've got a future boost energy capsule. So knowing that Prime Catcher is not available and the other one isn't in hand helps. But is there, there is an Arvin in hand. So we do know that Kim is going to be able to find one quite easily next term. Here comes Cramorant. It's going to hit for 110. It's mm. a good idea. It, at the moment, Kim does not actually have access to Ampu very much. But essentially, Arvin's going to grab an electric generator. And if we see one hit, there's yeah. an energy in hand. You get the future boost off the Arvin, and that will be a two prize KO. So it's all down to the electric generator that will inevitably be grabbed from this Arvin. At the very least, this damage is a little bit more relevant for Christian, so he's made something out of his Cramorant because that can set up a Sableye play quite nicely, or even the Iron Hands of your own. But Kim does have the Arvin response immediately here. I said inevitably, but we are running up a switch cart as well here. Yeah, undoing the math that's just been dealt by Christian. Yeah, and this, this is kind of a way of saying, look, I'm probably not getting two prizes, but I'm getting one prize while denying you an easy KO. And in some ways, that is a little bit better. Or we go into the Maridon here. Yeah, we're not there yet. No, I think we're just... We are now there now. There. Yeah, the, so the future boost energy capsule, not only useful for retreating your Pokemon, taking your retreat cost down to zero, but it's also an additional 20 damage for your future Pokemon. So alongside that third Iron Crown, County X on the bench, we're able to get the second prize of the game here with Miraidon. Very effective. And I've been talking about the energy, and the energy here is working out beautifully because now we've got two Iron Hands that are very close to being ready to go. We've got a Miraidon in the active, which has been doing a lot of work, 
and we haven't even seen a generator yet, have we? No, they're still chilling out in the deck, which is pretty scary if you're Christian's side of the table because there's a lot of pressure being put on. I was mentioning how important the heavy baton sometimes can be, but Kim's given himself a great opportunity by using the uh, Miraidon twice to spread energy very effectively. Yeah, heavy baton really is not going to be an issue in this game. Kim has got the attackers that they need all ready to go. The switch cart was a genius little play just to get that 30 damage off, make the math so much harder, and now we see Christian Flower selecting. This will get to seven in the loss zone, so Mirage Gate is now on board. We have that Mirage Gate, and that's why we're seeing Hooper EX come onto this board. But I believe from our chorus, do we need to find either Forest Seal Stone or the Prime Catcher here? I think that's one of the big things we're looking for. Christian likely to use the Mirage Gates proactively to thin the deck of any energy so that you are powering up multiple Pokemon all in one go. The alternative, of course, is if you spend your Mirage Gates on Iron Hands, you can KO the active Pokemon for two prizes as well. Yeah, there's a bunch of options here. And of course, we say, oh, well, Kim's fine with the energy. There's no issue. Well, I think Christian is trying to create an issue here. We do see the Mirage Gate coming down. We're going to see a Darkness onto the Hooper and then presumably lightning onto the iron hands, I'm thinking. Yeah, I think there's already a dark energy in hand for Christian yes. to turn attach, so that's all good. Yeah, one came out of the flower selecting, and it was one of those you are not going to lose. so. <laughs> for sure. We're going to see a shuffle up before Christian has a massive chorus here. You'd much prefer to use a prime catcher on the three energy iron hands that Kim has. Yeah, that There's the turn attachment, so the intention's been mo uh, known there. Oh, has the boss's orders. Oh, that'll so do So he doesn't have to nicely. risk anything. Can boss up the three energy iron hands, and Christian gets a really nice response here and levels up the prize race. And this is where a heavy baton would have been much more useful, but unfortunately, it's not an option. Those free energy are going to be lost. All four electric generator are still in the deck. Mm. They are still available, and you do have a Maraid on with that free retreat, so you can put that up and try and sign hitting somebody's generator now. Retreat Maridon at the end of the turn if you like. But first, you've got to find a way to deal with this Hooper. Yeah, Kim's got a pretty easy way to deal with the Hooper. You can just arm press and take two. I think yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, so it's mostly about finding those that next Iron Hands EX. There's already Iron O in hand as well, which is quite intriguing as an option. But you also really need to start finding these generators for your next Iron Hands as well, because these require a lot of energy. If you're going to keep up here, that's why Kim's taking the time here, debating through what the turn's going to be. And with 220 HP on the Hooper, you just need a manual attachment for the turn. Yeah. Arm press does 160, plus the free iron ground is 220, that's a KO. But then you will be essentially out of options, and that is not what you're looking for. So, we're eyeing up some Pokemon here, we've got a Maridon coming down. Mm, as well as the other iron hand. hands. I think that Maridon's just going to end up being researched away, <laughs> most I likely, or Iono to the bottom, either way. Yeah. Get it out of sight. I think that is a good shout. And this is the thing about Iono. Because you don't shuffle into your deck, you put the card at the bottom, mm. you can essentially search a card and stash it at the bottom so you're not going to draw back into it. There's the attachment for the yeah. turn. Here comes the Iono, and you don't need anything this turn. What you really want to do, though, is start setting up for future turns. And you've, there's, there's one generator prize. There's three in the deck. You've got to start hitting some soon. You think so? Only four cards, though. It's not a lot. You're really just hoping this Iono is also disrupting Christian quite a lot. Oh, four supporter cards. <laughs> two, we've got two Professor's Research, we've got one Arvin, Arvin and yeah. one Iono. That is not what we're looking for. Kim is going to have to commit to this Iron Hands oh. and really hope that the hand disruption has helped. This is a risky turn. You have to take out this Hooper EX. It's too dangerous, but it does open the door for Christian based on how well they can draw through the deck. If they can find a response to this fairly damaged Iron Hands currently in the active, Kim will be limited to just Maraidon next turn unless there's a ton of generators coming towards the late game. Yeah, and there is an answer here. Iron Hands, Arm Press. I know we all want to use Iron Hands for Ampy very much. I feel like I failed when I use Arm Press most of the time. <laughs> but right now, Arm Press will get the KO quite nicely. That would put Iron Hands up to 240. It's only got 230. So that would be an option here. Yeah, we are really looking for some of these Mirage Gate. I haven't seen enough of Christian's hand just yet. 
Uh, but I think that was, what was it, a failed Buddy Buddy Poffin just to shuffle the deck, I believe, yeah. because there was a couple of Colrus put to the bottom by Kim's Iono there. So shuffling those back into the mix so you can find them with Flower Selecting is a huge choice. So even though you can burn these cards and get no effect, you're still reordering your deck in a way that's favorable for your odds now. And yet once upon a time, we had a card that just shuffled your deck and everyone thought it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, these other ones have a bit more utility. <laughs> yeah, they don't just shuffle your deck. They do other things sometimes. Oh, Mirage Gate straight away. Nice. That means Christian has a perfect response here. And this is what Kim doesn't want to see. Mirage Gate does essentially guarantee that Iron Hands will KO Iron Hands. And then the, the game is still absolutely winnable for Kim next turn. But now you kind of need to hit free energy off Generator and an attachment for the turn and the gusting effect. And at that point, you're starting to ask a lot of things from your deck. And you can hit them all off a, of Presser's Research, for instance. But it just becomes really awkward at that point. Sorry to let you down, but I think it's just going to be more and more arm presses, honestly. Kim, uh, sorry, Christian brings up his Iron Hands, uses arm press, and then Kim could also look for extra damage modifiers and arm press straight back. That could also be a route to victory. Yeah, it would only take an Iron Crown or a Future Boost. You're already yeah. hitting 220, so, yeah. and of course, you then need to hit two energy off Generator rather than three, so yeah. yes, fine. It's an arm press <laughs> game. I'm letting not you down. I, <laughs> I want to have you very much, all right? But you're right, it's an arm press game right now. Here comes the Mirage Gates. Christian's already scouted the deck with that Nest Ball, grabbing Raikou V, knowing that the extra Lightning is available. Can load up this Iron Hands EX. Really nice spot from them a couple turns back to pre-bank one Lightning earlier, knowing that the Hooper was kind of the most dangerous threat. Kim was going to ignore your Iron Hands EX, so you can weave it in very nicely now. And it's looking like Christian is behind on the prize race, but in a better board position after this KO. Yeah, it's basically going to give Kim a one-turn clock to get the response. And Kim's got a Professor's Research, and I think next turn is probably going to be a I'm going to draw as many cards as I can and cross my fingers. Oof. That is a route to victory. What I think it's using, Mirage Joe? Gate versus Prime Catcher. I think you have to keep the Prime Catcher uh, available for yourself. Losing a Mirage Gate, but you can thin the deck with it. Yeah, a debate, but you have to keep your ace back in this spot. I think the way... Well, no, I, I think Prime Catcher is the easy one here because either you get your Iron Hands KO'd and you lose, or you attach for turn Prime Catcher to Mirage on and win the following turn. But you also need energy as well, don't forget. To yeah, be well, able that's to. the attach for turn, so you will yeah. need to draw into that. But with this... That's why I, we're super running some energy right yeah. now. I am assuming the energy is going to come out, so I think Chris yeah. is basically going, look, Prime Catcher's my win con unless I lose this turn. I don't need Mirage Gate. If I need to Mirage Gate, I've lost my Iron Hands and we're going to game two. Oh, I was thinking of it just to get that fourth energy but you're right the prime catch is the higher priority uh, target yeah. no doubt here it could also help you just get more selecting if it comes to it absolutely so here we go it's going to be iron hands KOing iron hands both players down to two prize cards remaining kim as we know has a lot of, already has the future booster in hand so it's likely going to be a big research looking for electric generators and we've not seen any all game and there's still there wasn't one in that was there even one in that poker gear? Oh, there is one. There's in the one in the poker gear. gear. None I in know hand you can't currently. grab out the poker gear. I'm just saying they are doing a very good job of hiding right now. <laughs> the issue is, you know, Kim's already had to use a lot of these lightning energy early. I think has six energy been cleared off the board from Iron Hands getting KO'd. There's still plenty in the deck, but the generators are by no means guaranteed. They're much higher odds that earlier on in the game before Mariah has thinned your deck of them. Yeah, every time a Rhydon takes energy out of your deck, it actually makes your electric generator less likely Here we to go. fire. Here is the first one of the game. It's, oh, a, it's whiff. a whiff. That is rough. That is harsh. Not only do we have to find more generators, we have to hit them, and we have to find a manual attachment here. You it's need going free to be a huge, energy. Yeah, it's going to be a huge seven cards from this professor's research to define this game one. Yeah, that electric generator, by the way, was taken off the prizes last turn. Yep. There's three in the deck. None of them have come out of the deck so far. So the goal is very simple. You need to hit free energy. If you hit free energy, that should be the game. You should be able to be hitting 240 with arm press. Last two prizes, jobs are good. And if you don't, we know that Christian is already holding on to prime catcher. So it will be basic energy for the game at that point. Yeah, I think it's surely too risky for Kim to consider an INO here. No, you can't INO here, surely. I think you've got to go turbo here. You have it's still, a, board it's still a lot to hit. It's still a lot to hit from the professor's research. It is. Kim could just retreat into 
one of these crown. It's going to be the research yeah, though. We're going for the win this turn. It's definitely what I do, but I'm not sure that's <laughs> always the best way to go. We have an energy attack oh my for the goodness. turn. One we generator. have a generator. Just one. Just one. And we drew two energy. That's too many. One energy is enough. Let's have a look at the deck here. This is deck fitting. I love this. We're taking cards Four out. energy in the deck. These are two cards now that are not in the deck, so that ups your odds of hitting with the electric generator. And it's very simple. Double hit, you win. Not a double hit. It's over to Christian. It's all down to this, the electric generator, five cards. We have to see two lightning energy here. We have enough damage with our Iron Hands EX on the bench. Here we go, two energy, and this will be the game. What do we see? Oh, three, three energy! energy. That's Kim. one more than you need! Now we're going to see the Iron Hands come active. Arm <laughs> press for 240, and Kim will take game one of this final. Incredible scenes in our first game here. Of the best of three, Kim with a huge sigh of relief. Electric generator, sometimes it just gets there. And I'm going to say, if ever somebody deserved a double hit of generator it was Kim on that last turn having them gone for ages having the first one come out from your prizes when you take prizes three and four and hitting no energy I think Kim had earned a double hit off of that electric generator at that point that was fantastic a very tense game and I do think Christian probably had the game next turn yeah it was basic energy for the game yeah I think that's really what it came down to we had to see the hit there of two energy and that's defined our game one but boy i'm really looking forward to games two and maybe three as well because we just saw how much of a back and forth it can be there's going to be hand destruction thrown at both players there's going to be a lot of dig on both sides of the field sometimes research uh, and just hoping for the best sometimes it's going to be a number of flower selectings and concealed cards and whatnot from christian so it's gonna be another cat and mouse game here so yeah i'm on the edge of my seat already and a big you're standing up joe well i will be exciting? i've been on the edge of my seat this whole <laughs> time <laughs> here's a question though if you're christian do you want to go first or second great question uh i think i'd prefer to be going second try and get chorus and give myself an easy route to seven the next turn i think that's ideal but you are of course then giving him extra manual attachments and that is a big deal if you get extra manual attachments you need less generator hits later on yeah, that would be my preference. I think I would choose to, I, I think I would go second here, try and get the first attack, try and get myself to seven on an easier route. But I, I don't want my opponent to go first because they get the first attachment, but I don't want them to go second for fear of a really strong start going second. And you've got to choose one. Oh, Iron Bundle, not a great start. But then again, it can be useful once it hits the bench. I think it's looking a little worse for Christian. Certainly not a Confe start. I saw Sableye and I saw Spiritomb. Ooh. I saw Roxanne as a supporter. I'm not sure if there was any access to Colrus though. Again, it does depend on who chose to go first. We're going to see some prize cards. A couple Arvin for Kim, which is one of your crucial early game setup uh, supporters, but there are more Iono in hand. As we see the fist bump getting into game number two here, and as expected, Kim is forced first has the Techno Radar, so can get an early attachment onto either Maridon or Iron Hands, both looking like great options, and has supporter for next turn as well. Yeah, that's a decent start, honestly. I like going for the attachment for Iron Hands turn one in this situation. <laughs> You've made your stance very clear. Oh, it's yeah. <laughs> but also, like, you can always attach the Maridon next turn, yeah. but if you attach this turn, then there is the possibility that you start hitting generators next turn. What you don't want to do is attach the Maridon turn one and then be an energy short of that big, giant, swingy game two. Well, Kim Turn agrees two. because it's going to be Iron Crown plus Iron Hands from this Turn 1 Techno Radar. So it feels like having the multiple threats of Maridon coming out if need be, but also the Iron Hands. Oh, wow, look at this. Double Iron Hands straight away. Are we really getting that aggressive? I mean, it, dep it depends what you're expecting. If you're expecting to hit a bunch of generators and have a bunch of energy to throw around the field, then yeah, by all means, go double Iron Hands. But I think one is enough just to start getting set up and getting some energy on the board. It is a real discussion here for Kim because the Iron Crown is also being eyed up here. You play the fewest copies of the single prize Maridon, so there's a debate just statistically to take that, so you have those options. But also, you need multiple Iron Crown if yes. you want to make the most use out of your Maridon. So we are going to go for the split of one Iron Crown and one Iron Hands in the end. I'm not sure how much there is beyond this turn attachment, but overall, it's a pretty reasonable start for Kim. This is not too bad. I mean, you'd love to be hitting a bunch of generators and everything else, but turn one, going first, you can't attack, you can't use the porter. Oh, we do have a generator going in oh, turn okay. one, though. 
And it's away. The, the one of psychic energy. That is just a slap in the face. <laughs> you play 14 lightning and you see the one of psychic. Yeah, I hit my one psychic, but I missed my 14 lightning. That is. Feels bad. That, uh, yeah, feels bad is a way to put it. We do get the attachment for turn, but that's actually only. Oh, and actually, we're not getting an attachment for turn. We are actually using it to just retreat the iron bundle. So actually, whiffing a generator, not getting an attachment. I'm not loving Kim's turn so much anymore, Joe. Yeah, a bit of a surprise for me. You know that this is still a future Pokemon, so you can end up using a future booster capsule to move that Iron Bundle, maybe respecting the fact that it's 100 hit points, could be easily catalyzed on by an early Cramorant from Christian. But I find that curious as to not just going on Iron Hands EX. Yeah, I, I think it's got to be the worry about the Cramorant. Of course, there's another question here of if that's your only single prize and you're giving it up as a single prize, maybe it's not the end of the world. It, it forces your opponent to try and get a free prize KO with Iron Hands, but that's not really what Christian's deck does. Christian's deck doesn't have all the damage modifiers. It takes out small Pokemon for two, so there is an argument that losing Iron Bundle doesn't really affect the prize map too much. Christian can switch and then retreat into a second confer here. So it was at least beginning to ramp up that loss zone. Also had a Colorus for the turn. So it was getting to four. And I know Cramorant is in the hand, but it's far less effective now. It still can set up that Sableye, which is already in play. We started with that for the turn. So yeah, the 110 damage once again from Christian. At least cobbles something together as we pass things back over to Kim. Showing why you might I know straight away. Yeah, great show there for why Christian wanted to go second. That was a very good turn one going second. That worked very nicely. Now the Iono comes down. New hand of six for Kim. What do we have here? We got supporters. We got a future booster energy cap still. We got some energy. Is there a way to get him a ride on out though, Joe? Didn't see it. Let's have a look. I know a, a couple, well, one of the radars is in the prizes. One's already used. Is that the Iron Bundle being played here? It is indeed, forcing a Comfy into the active. But it feels like forcing a Comfy into the active. We have Nestle. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Because that's the kind of thing you want to do and then KO with Maridon. That's the goal here. Well, we are seeing Maridon, so that suggests there probably is a switching out in hand as well for Kim. Yeah, we got the booster in hand, so that is definitely there. We're good. The, the crowd is going to get out the active. Maridon is going to come up. So that's a nice bonus. Yep, initiating the prize race. Not there a bad thing go. at all. Take we out that Comfy, get some energy on the board. Yep, initiating the race. And yeah, as you said, Iron Hands getting into the mix, or at least threatening for next turn. The Psych Energy coming out straight away. <laughs> Kim not fussed about trying to use any other attacker than Iron Hands. He's, uh, I think you're a fan of Kim's play right now. <laughs> yeah, I am. And actually, that's a cheeky, really nice play, because now there is one more Lightning Energy in the deck that you can hit with an Electric Generator. We already saw once that the Psychic Energy was there. Yeah. So now you're just upping your odds. It's only a tiny up, but it's still an upping of your odds. That's what the Pokemon trading card game is often all about. You can put yourself in statistically the best position, but really it does come down to how the cards fall. Yeah, it means you can't attack with that right on second attack, but I don't know, that's not as much fun as, as I can. <laughs> Just more odds for Generator. We saw how important it was. It's, it's what won Kim the first game here, as Christian's having a quick deck search with this Nest Ball. I think there was the option of Radiant Greninja put to the front. We are at four in the loss zone, so one flower selecting plus a chorus will get us to seven, and we can start seeing some Mirage Gate action here. And that Iron Crown, where are we on with the Iron Crown? So it's got 110 on, yeah. so it's got 110 left. So Greninja's not Sableye could get there at some point in the future. That could be a cheeky little KO for Sableye, but or just gust it up with Cramorant. Yeah, Cramorant could finish that off very easily. We saw Kim very quick to switch cart heal away a Pokemon in game one. As we are going to see, Christian does indeed have Chorus. Let's see what it offers. A lot of energy, but also a few Mirage Gates. So some painful, well, at least one awkward loss zone. The Artisan's an easy choice. Yeah, and it is actually in range of an Iron Hands right now as well. So. Oh, yeah. wow, yeah. You could take a three prize carry that way. I said that's not really what Christian's deck does, but actually you've set up that damage, so it can absolutely do that. Does Christian... Well, we certainly have Mirage Gate. Do we have the right attackers lined up just yet? Uh, there are more Nest Ball in hand, so Christian has a lot of options here. Going to start with the concealed cards, maybe drawing into something like Prime Catcher would make his mind up. 
Switch cart now available, so and you can select and get out of the active quite happily. Yeah, there's a Comfey as well in hands. We are still one card away from seven in the lost zone. Now we get the Comfey and... Yeah, yeah, we're you... keeping Iron Hands, that's for sure. Yeah, that, that's not a hard decision. It's the only Iron Hands in the deck. We have Nest Ball. I'm not sure if we have a means of targeting Kim's benched Iron Hands EX. That would be the absolute dream situation. Oh, yes. That's, I think, what Christian was looking for to really take a huge swing in this game. But now Christian could still Iron Hands into the active and take the first two prize KO. It's just using a lot of your resources early. And as we know, Kim is playing four copies of Iron O in the deck list. And that can really punish aggressive starts, especially when Christian is having to spend quite a few more resources this game just to take out the active Pokemon. Yeah, it's not always fair, but you've got to do what you've got to do here. So, we're not there yet. We've got seven cards in a loss zone. There's no attack as established, unfortunately. Nothing on the bench. And you, it's one of those awkward things. With your, we, we saw all the last turn, last game, the Hooper took a big prize and got return KO'd immediately. So it's not one that you can bench early. It needs to come down when you're using it. It is a bit dodgy, but it's not that much gusting for either player. Interesting. It does look like we're going back into a Cramorant energy on the <laughs> Iron Hand and then just KO with the Cramorant. Such a low-key turn from the Cramorant, just going to take a one prize KO. I think you're right, Ross. I think eyeing up the 110 damage on this Iron Crown opens up your own Iron Hands to take three later. So you can still win by taking a single prize knockout. It is still relevant here. Yeah, that single prize knockout wasn't looking great early in the game, but it's looking very nice now because of the damage. That's the thing. You know, things that don't look like good plays turn into good plays <laughs> later on because you're setting up this big, long string of things that are going to take you through the game. And, oh, no mucking about that. Double Iron Hands, yeah, and then immediately one immediately discards one and gets another. <laughs> <laughs> Again, because this Maridon has been dealt with, we saw Kim in game one want to use it twice. Yes. Because that's such a great way to guarantee your energy into play. Now Christian is saying, I'm going to force you to hit generators, and I'm going to keep my eye out for these heavy baton. I'll try and remove them in any way that I can. So I'm going to force Kim to have as many hits from generator as possible if he wants to keep up racing with these Iron Hands EX. This game is not going like game one when it is a lot more awkward. The best thing Christian did in game one was using that Hooper to take, I think it was free energy off the board with that Iron Hands. Here, that hasn't happened, and actually Kim is just not getting that energy stashed anywhere near as effectively. And this has not been a good game for Generator, but here we go, Professor's Research, seven cards, can we finally see a hit off a generator that isn't game-winning? Well, we have drawn into one, so we can start seeing the fireworks here from Electric Generator. Because Kim's hit two energy or three generators so far in this match. It's averaging, you know, we're averaging less than one per generator at this stage. One of the big misses was Kim was not able to find the heavy baton either. Oh. So instead, it's going to arm press for a one prize KO, putting them back onto evens, so that is handy but also holding on to Generator. What do you think about that one, Ross? Well, you know I want to play the Generator and thank <laughs> you very much to KO the, the Cramorant. Everyone knows that's what I personally want to do, but Kim has shown, not just in this game, in some of the other games on stream, they are willing to take a more patient approach here yeah. and, you know, protect a bit more energy. If this does go down to an Iron Hands and you really need a... Uh, sorry, to a Hooper, yeah. what do you need to respond? A free energy Iron Hands? Well... If that is what happens, and it looks like that really might be what yeah. happens, you're going to be so glad you kept on to that generator. That's what you're doing here. You're playing a more sensible game, giving up a prize on the Cramorant so that you're not giving up the game by running out of attackers. It's also meaning that you're in charge of the hand disruption, right? Because you're stopping Christian from using Roxanne, because you're staying at four prize cards, and it means you can go straight back response KOing this Hooper in the best case scenario, and also weaving in your own Iono. So I think Kim's almost setting a trap with this play. Yeah, I actually really like it. As much as I want to go turbo here and take as many prizes <laughs> as possible. You're being disappointed over and over again by this arm press. <laughs> but I it's, am. it's yeah. amazing, this game. It is, because it's the right play every time. Arm press does seem to be the better way to be going in a lot of these. It's nice and flashy to take the extra prize, but conserving your energy, conserving the hand disruption threats actually does make a lot more sense a lot of the time. It's just not quite as much fun for me on a personal level. <laughs> well, Christian does have a couple Mirage Gate to debate over here. Un, well, unsurprisingly, it's going to be the Hooper EX that gets powered up, as well as the Iron Hands, just like last game. It's going to be actually just to the active so you can retreat for free. 
well, not for free, but you can get it out of the deck with the Mirage Gate. Yeah, you haven't used a turn attack, so I'm, I'm willing to allow that lexicon. That'll do. Yeah, there's another Mirage Gate in hand as well. So that'll get the second you, darkness. Possibly can you retreat now, then Super Rod back in multiple energy? Yeah, there will be two, so you can retreat out of this config first to have the better selection of which energy are going back into the, well, back into play with this next Mirage Gate. And that's why we're seeing the retreat now to get full value from Super Rod. And let's not forget that Iron Crown on the bench is still in range of Sableye. There's only eight cards in the Lost Zone rather than 10. Mm -hmm. But that Sableye will be able to take a very easy, very cheeky two prize KO without using any kind of gusting in the future. That's something we're keeping an eye on here. Christian shuffling, but then having a think, are they? Does that mean they're not going to use the second Mirage Gate in hand? Do they have access to another Darkness Energy to turn attach here? I thought that I might have seen one in hand. I, there was a the hand is flip. large. So there is a Darkness Energy. <laughs> yeah, there in you hand. go. Turn attachment. Wrong. Holding on to the Mirage Gate. Then this is quite interesting because you're not playing that well around Iono from Kim. That's a bit of a risk. Christian taking two prizes though, keeping up in the race. Now here's we're going to go. That last, it's going to be one more prize for Christian and then save a life for the game. Unfortunately, Kim, you're not playing stuff like Turo. You're not playing Penny. It's not that kind of deck. You there can, is, well, yeah, you can still win next turn with Iron Hands into this crown as well. Let's not forget. You absolutely can. That is an option. There is a generator coming down. And I mean, have we seen the one off switch cart yet? I don't think so. Oh, I think we actually just saw it in that generator. I believe it ah, is so in, it's in the deck. so it's in the deck. That's good. So if you bring that, so it's got 110, it would bring it to 140, which would put it out of range of both Sableye and Iron Hand. So switch cut, like, kind of huge. I think the most important thing for Kim, though, is still hitting generators. We oh, just yeah. saw one energy from the first generator. Yeah, we did. So do you have to guarantee with Arvin here another generator? Or do you rely on Iono? That's got to be too big of a risk. It's such a risk, but the problem is it's a risk to... If you don't get the switch cart, then you've got a risk there of just losing two iron hands anyway. Kim's got the thinking hands out. <laughs> the thing, <laughs> using their hands and fingers to count through the, what the next couple turns are going to look like. Oh. Debating attaching to a Miraidon, yeah. just guaranteeing some attachments. If that's happening, it's probably going to be alongside Iono. The other question would be Arvin and find Guaranteed Generator and just hope it hits. Yeah, we are going for the Maradon. I'm not a fan of getting a Generator and hoping it hits because you then you yeah. also hope you're hoping it hits and you're hoping your opponent doesn't gust up the Iron Crown. It's just a bit too much hopium for my, for my taste. <laughs> Does Kim still go for Arvin just to find the heavy baton, perhaps? If you're committing to one Iron Hands and just poking this Hooper EX, is that going to be important? Oh. Counter catcher being eyed up as well. Well, yeah, it is going to be the heavy baton. And what's the item card? Now, it could still be a generator here. You can go for the, it looks like it might be, you can still go for the slower play with Maridon and leave open the possibility of mm. Iron Hands. The problem is, if you even hit the double off the generator here, you're still 20 damage away from the KO with Arm Press because you don't have the future boost energy capsule unless it's in hand, and I don't remember seeing it. No. Is Kim debating bringing the Sableye into the active position with a counter catcher here? So your Iron Crown is less threatened, perhaps? That's also something on the mind. We're mentioning Iron Hands EX can win the game for Christian next turn. But also the fact that Kim is now having to give up another single prize Pokemon means that Christian could win in two turns by uh, taking out the Maridon for one prize, then finishing off this Iron Crown EX, which is damaged currently. Yeah, we have gone for the generator here, but it's not the all-in play it could have been. There's a bit of hedging going on <laughs> as well as the generator. Yeah, we'll still want to see if this generator can hit. I think taking out the Super EX is still valuable. Absolutely, we get Ooh, a whiff. Zero well, energy. It's, a it's a good thing Kim hedged his bets, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I did not like going all-in on the generator. I've, I've failed enough generator in my time that I do not like making it the be-all and end-all, but I'm not such a huge fan of just doing a little poke Ivan. I think it's the only really play available, but this is not where Kim wants to be here. Hitting yeah. the Hooper, but not KOing and just... There's, there's so many targets now for Christian. And if you fail the Iron Hands, you can just Sableye anyway. Yep, so Kim is forced to just poke into this Hooper EX for 100 damage. Not too shabby, but it does mean that the momentum has gone sort of out of your favor a little bit. You are just hoping that Ino can catch you back up. So it's Christian's job to take a one prize KO this turn 
or even weave in Sableye now and just deal with the Iron Crown while the prizes are on the table, but also set up as much else as you can before you get hand disrupted. Yeah, you know Kim's not winning next turn. Kim's deck isn't taking four prizes in one turn. So if you've got the play for the Iron Hands to win right now, brilliant. If not, I love using Sableye. Take two prizes while they're on the board, and then you can worry about the last KO next turn. We're going to start with a flower selecting after a switch. See what we can get from these top two cards. I see energy that can dig further into the deck if required. I think we're pretty close. Well, with Mirage Gate in hand, maybe this attachment can be helpful for Christian. Yeah, it's going to be a switch cart being removed here. Oh, Kim's jealous. Kim really wanted one of them. <laughs> then we have a poker gear. Let's see if we can dig towards Colrus. I feel yeah, like that's the best choice. Oh, is that boss's orders as well? Another decision for Christian here. I mean, if you've got the energy, then boss's orders, I think, has got to be a better option. Ah, yeah, boss's orders coming. Has Christian mapped it out? Can they turn attach and Mirage Gate to this Iron Hands and take a three prize turn, closing out game two here? Well, Christian going to scout with Nespal to see if they have the energy remaining for this Mirage Gate. Yeah, always nice to check, of course. Ampi very much only needs one lightning energy. Here, Here comes the Mirage Gate. And there's a lightning and a psychic. We know there's a water energy in hand. We know there's a boss's orders in hand. There is yeah. a, a tool that will let you retreat. We bring up the Iron Crown, and this is going to be a gigantic free prize KO with Ampi very much. And Christian evens it up in one game each. And all I'm saying, Joe, the person who used Ampi very much ended up winning the game. <laughs> it's finally become the star of the show that amp you very much a three prize turn for christian set up very early with that cramorant yeah and kim had a bit of a stumbling block there was only able to weave in one ride on immediately tackled by christian and i think that was one of the big reasons why he sort of fell behind a little bit in that game too the generators weren't cooperating which meant he had to take a turn off using iron hands which put him that little bit too far behind yeah and whiffing that switch card i mean look you're playing one switch card it's an item card you're not even playing stuff like forest seal stone here so you have to grab it off of Arvin or draw into it naturally. So it, it wasn't high odds to get it, no. but that switch cart would have changed everything. And you can imagine that game, you hit a switch cart, you hit another energy or two off generator, your Marion survives an extra turn. There were ways back into that game for Kim. Yep. So this isn't one of those, oh no, my opponent had a good game, there's nothing I can do. It's a case of that game didn't go my way, yep. but now I get the choice as to whether I go first or second. And I, I saw that choice straight away. Kim just pointed straight across. <laughs> said, I'm going second oh, yeah. so I can get the first hit in and most importantly with that Maraid on because yeah. it's such a great starting point, especially if you're taking those prize cards early. I think with Christian, there's a real question of, oh, do I want to let my opponent go first or second? If you're Kim, you want to go second. It is very, very easy. <laughs> I you think the decision is made for Christian by Kim wanting to go second so much as yes, well. Yes, I agree entirely. And maybe you get the giant iron hands of electric generator, but a lot of the time, you're going to get a KO on a Comfe with Maraid on, you're going to get the first prize you're going to accelerate a couple of energy. You are going to be off and rolling. And important to note, that's how we saw Kim roll turn one. And, uh, sorry, game one. And the earlier you get attacking with Maraidon, the less likely it is that you're going to get KO'd by Christian. What a fitting way to end our final European event of the season. We're coming down to a game three. Two very well-respected known players battling it out tooth and nail here. And it's coming down to this game three. Really looking forward to see how this one ends up. I couldn't have thought of a better way to end our season. No, this is a good final with which to end the European circuit. I will say they both started with iron hands in their opening hand. <laughs> oh, prime catcher we don't love in the prizes, although it should come out fairly quickly. Uh, and Christian actually forced to start iron hands because the only other options were there's a spirit tomb, which is a dead card in this matchup, and Hooper that you do not want to put down until it's relevant. So forced to start the iron hands there, and Kim has gone for iron crown, but there is a future boost energy capsule in the hand, so that's going to be able to get out the active pretty easily. Yeah, Christian's hand is bad because he's going first. He does have Colrus for next turn, but it is an unassuming just attached pass right now from Christian. Let's see how Kim can capitalize on this. Well, very good start with the future boost energy capsule already in hand and that techno radar. What a great item for this archetype. Yeah, there's three cards you want if you came on this turn. You want a techno radar to go and get two Pokemon, jobs are good and you want an energy to attach to your Maridon, jobs are good and you want yourself a Future Boost Energy Capsule to get your Iron Crown out the active, and you got that as well. Jobs are good and all the way around. You're not getting a KO this turn. 
Okay, that's a lie. If you can get eye in hand, <laughs> hit two energy off a generator and attach for turn and get either two more iron crown or an iron crown and a future boost, yes, you can actually arm press to win the game this turn. It is unlikely, yeah. so you're probably just going to go ride on. But that, I want it on the. It, it is possible to win possible. this turn. Yeah, but Kim is being more of a realist here yeah. and getting ride on <laughs> as expected. I think all things considered, you're happy with this. You've got your ideal turn one. Christian hasn't even begun to get any cards into the loss zone. And you're even putting this Iron Hands into easier range for you later on. This is all great stuff. Uh, great stuff for Kim here in our game three. And Kim wants two uses of Maridon, so that gives Christian one turn to get four cards in the Lost Zone mm. and get Cramorant in the active after having moved the Iron Hands, or Kim is going to get their wish and get both of those uses of the Maridon, and that's lovely. Now, here we do see an electric generator. Double hit could change things here, Joe. <laughs> oh, oh, it is a double hit and everything. Energy. That'll do nicely. Could it happen, Ross? So oh, far, the arm press is at 180 damage thanks to the one Iron Crown in play. We just need a couple more to be found here. Yeah, what supporter does Kim have in hand right now? You need has an Iron O. You need four things. You need four in combination, <laughs> combination of Iron Crown yeah. and Future Booster. It is not that likely, but you haven't attached. For, but here's the thing. If you attach to Iron Hands and Whiff, you don't get your Maraud on. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't this like is, saying This is just it. way safer. Yeah, yeah. I like this play, <laughs> but I don't like that I like this play. As, uh, I mean, especially because your opponent's attached past. You don't want to yeah. give them the freebie of Iron O either. So this is definitely the right play from Kim. And beautiful once again. We get that psychic energy out to give you a better chance of hitting off your generator. We get a e free energy onto one, one energy on the other. Again, that is a great play. You can arm press and you can manually attach for Ampu very much. Both of them are on the board. And this is a scary situation for Christian here because Kim has got options to either take out bigger Pokemon mm. or amp you very much onto little Pokemon. And the best case scenario you can probably do is but even if you crammer and you're probably giving up two prizes <laughs> straight away anyway yeah it's all sorts of awkward you're right this opener from kim is really robust and has a lot of options right now the good news for christian is there is at least confe and some switching cards so we can get a few more cards in the lost zone here so we are piecing something together there's some things coming down here. We got a switch cart, which will not only switch, but also heal 30 damage. Could end up being relevant. You never know. And here we see the Comfey with a first flower selecting. Let's hope it's not too awkward. Um, if you put the cards down and look at your hand, it probably is not a terribly easy choice. I saw another switch cart, I think. Oh, you don't want to lose switching cards early. It was lost vacuum that was kept. Is that another way to get you one step closer? Obviously, Lost Vacuum is a really big card for the matchup later down the line if you're having to respect Heavy Baton later on. It's going to be a Nest Ball now as well for Christian. Yeah. Was the Forest Hill Stone in hand? Oh, I didn't see it was in hand or not. That is certainly something that's going to help. If it is, might want to go for a Raikko here. Let's have a look as Christian's going to scout through. One thing that we really should note is that the boss's orders has hit the loss zone and their prime catcher's prize as well. So oh, wow. they really have to play carefully now because they can only hit through the active. That's kind of annoying, honestly. Yeah. That is a less than ideal situation. Yeah. The only other way they could access the bench would be their attacks of Radiant Greninja and Sableye for at least the opening stages of this game. Christian is going to eventually nest ball a second Confe here so that they can likely get to four cards in the loss zone. I mean, four cards in the Lost Zone seems pretty easy here. And I was saying about giving up two prizes with a Cramorant. There's another argument here that actually Kim might just be able to get a KO on the Cramorant for one prize with Maridon, accelerate a bunch more energy and actually go down that route instead. Maybe even start building up a third Iron Hands to just really say, I don't care about your Hooper. We're having the sort of sad side of the flower selectings right now. I think oh. it's a Lightning Energy versus a Colrus. That is a Colrus in hand for Christian. But it never feels great when this is the crucial supporter in the deck. Getting rid of one of them. Yeah, we're going to keep a lightning energy right now. We do have a manual attachment for the turn. If you feel like that's relevant, yep, it's going to go on to the Iron Hands EX and passes back over to Kim here. How can they capitalize? Could they arm press KO Christian's own Iron Hands EX? And Could this. they just take the one prize and fill even more energy into play? Well, let's start with the generator and see what happens. You got, I mean, you've got three options here. You can go after the benched iron hands. You can amp you very much the Comfey for two prizes. Or you can use Maridon to KO the Comfey and accelerate a bunch more energy. All three of those are pretty nice, frankly. 
Kim does have one hit from this electric generator. It's going to go on the other iron hands. So there's one ready to arm press and one currently just getting loaded up in the back. Still no Ampy very much option available. I'm pretty sure there are also turn attachments for Kim here. Yeah, you've still got your turn attachment if you can find an energy or if there's already one in hand. So you've got options oh, no, it's here. It's just Iono. We're getting a fresh six for Kim here. Christian also having to shuffle one of those Colrus to the bottom after having just lost owned one. Not an ideal situation. Free energy, so you've got your attachment for the turn. You've got a heavy baton there and an Arvin for next turn at least. So that's going to help out. Are we just quite poking nicely. for 60 here? Did we miss any Iron Crown or the option? Are we? Oh man, do we even pay retreat the active perhaps? Oh. It has a two retreat cost, so you'd have to spend your attachment just to retreat, then rely on heavy baton, and you'd still only be taking one prize. Or do you just still keep setting up more iron hands? I feel like that's also a really reasonable choice, but it's not the tempo we were expecting here. No. We really assumed that Kim was taking one or two. We didn't think zero was on the menu, but the iron has not helped. No, I laid out three good options yeah. and none of them actually <laughs> ended up being a possibility in okay, the end. Okay, we are going aggressive. We're going to try and take a confit off this board, give Christian less draw and initiate this prize race. I think the safety net of the heavy baton is the reason Kim has taken this aggressive line. I see, I, I like the heavy baton. I also like the fact that Christian has still got some work to do. Now, it, it's a weird information game, but when you see your opponent lost zone a Colrus, you know they've got a Colrus in hand. So then when you play an Iono, you know you're putting one to the bottom. So you know that three of their four Colrus are basically unavailable. And you also know that they probably need to play a Colrus in order to get to seven in the loss zone. Not guaranteed, yep. but likely. And that means that Hooper is probably off the table. Again, this is all uncertain, but you know there's a good chance Hooper's not coming out, which makes your iron hand safe, because that's about the only way Christian's getting rid of it. They will be able to at least shuffle the deck with this Buddy Buddy Poffin. I think getting another Convey is also very reasonable here. But yeah, like you said, mostly going to be helpful to shuffle a chorus back towards the top so you can maybe hit it from some of these flower selectings. That's what you're looking for. Also worth noting that Prime Catcher has been shuffled to the top of yeah. the prizes. So the chances of that Prime Catcher coming out really in this game are very, very slim at this point. That was a terrible history in Heavy Ball. <laughs> <That was laughs> All the good cards went to the top of the prizes. Yeah, there's a Mirage Gate at the top as well. So basically what's happening here is that Christian is almost out of, probably out of gusting for the game, honestly, with the yeah. boss's orders already disposed of that means gusting is probably not happening here comes some big flower selectings then christian needs the help oh it's Ryko that has to go i think yeah, in order no to choice. keep this hooper but now you do lose your forest hill stone option yep i oh. didn't say it was a good choice no do we but have to turn attack choice. retreat the convoy here just for one more flower selecting we're in a tough spot mirage gates in hand but we can't use them yet no you don't have a good attack oh, this hand is poor you can retreat and really now we're banking on a chorus it's not a Colrus. Darkness energy in Switch. There's a Darkness energy in the discard as well. There, yeah, there are, are four copies within the list, so I think it's safe to remove one. Yeah. We can get one more flower selecting here for Christian. After this one last confer, you're still out of range of Mirage Gate, so it still has to be Colrus here. Now, this will activate Mirage Gate, and no. it's Sableye of Water energy. Again, that's a bit awkward. Water energy means that your Greninja is not... Well, Death is technically an option, but it's awkward. But Sableye, we've seen how that can really help. But it's you so didn't get the early poke with Cramorant. I think the Sableye is like not great here, but because you've lost your other gusting effects, it just feels even worse that it hits the loss zone at this yep. stage. But it ha it's what you have to do here as Christian. Yeah, it's not like last game where the Sableye was a really obvious attacker that served a really obvious purpose. So yeah. this, I know, Sableye. this I know has worked so nicely for Kim. As you said, identifying that Colrus was lost zoned, let me get rid of the Colrus in hand, and it gives Kim the advantage now. You can go up two prizes this turn if they wish with an Ampy very much, your favorite, Ross. Yeah, I love Ampy very much. That makes me very happy. That would go up to three prizes taken, and that would be a very, very big deal. We also have Arvin, and that could also grab Prime Catcher. You'd still be only taking two prizes, but you could take out your opponent's Iron Hands EX, which is also looking very tempting. And get a two, yeah, and well, you take two prizes while taking a threat off the board, so yeah. no, I, I love that play. And we've, is it one or two generator we've seen so far this game? I think we've played one so far. So there's definitely, there's definitely 
generator available is actually one in hand, it looks like. <laughs> so we could even see some more energy getting established onto a third Iron Hands here, mm. really setting up a suite of them. Hooper is always going to be an issue, but it doesn't matter if you can return KO. Although, I'm looking at bench space here. You're going to need some, you're going to need two more modifiers if you're going to be using an arm press to KO a Hooper. Uh, true. Yeah. We're a couple. Of, well, that's like next turn for Kim. Yeah. But it's important. You You're need. right. I think that's one of the only things that Christian can do now to sort of keep in a race. If he can just hang on with a Hooper and it sticks around, that would be huge. So Kim does have to be careful about that board positioning now, because it feels like they're squeezing ahead this turn. It feels like the momentum is definitely with them. It's just making sure that you can close out this game. You've got this far ahead. You don't want to let something slip now. No, Heavy battle's just... the first choice. No, agreed. If you leave one bent space free, then one gets KO'd, and you can just grab two Iron Crown, <laughs> and that will do it. That, that will get you the KO. But more generator's just... the choice. Let's just thin even more energy as we go. And that's two a generator in hand now, so this could be a very pivotal turn. We could end this turn with three Iron Hands ready to go, and that would be huge. <laughs> that would be so dangerous. <laughs> Especially with only generators. three prizes left to take. So yeah. here's the first generator. What have we got? You're looking at the top cards. Are we going to see any energy? It's all another no. How many times is Kim going to whip in this matchup? I mean, sure, but that's why you grab a second one, Ross. <laughs> also, there's a lot of energy in play. Yeah. I mean, yes, you still have decent odds, and it is a bit of a low roll, but there's a couple in hand, quite a few in play. I think there's only like three or four lightning in the deck left, so they're not like super high odds. Double I think Kim here, make it even a second mm. whiff. Yeah, okay. Now you're allowed to be a little bit frustrated with that. Kim that was your support. Well, yeah, your supporter was spent doing nothing essentially. Now, ah, oh, and that is. I'm sorry, Kim. Has, somebody go and do the maths. I've not been keeping count. Someone <laughs> go back to the VOD. Do the maths for me. Hit us up on Twitter. Use the hashtag Play Pokemon. I think Kim has been hitting much less than one energy per generator here. It has not been going great, but. You're still taking two prizes. You're going down to three prizes remaining. You do have an Iron Hands ready to retaliate. Two Iron Crown next turn could be all you need. And Christian, I mean, you've basically got Hooper as a response, but that could be response KO'd back. That's the risk. That's the concern. Kim now has taken three prizes, so Roxanne is open. Maybe you're crossing your fingers that you can use a Hooper EX and Roxanne at the same time. Maybe that's a way that you could hang on I with your chunky Pokemon two prizer. No, if Roxanne is played, Kim's drawing two lightning energy. Oh, come on. <laughs> that's just how this goes, Joe. <laughs> no, not in, not in this final. <laughs> I believe in Roxanne. People call it a lie, but it's still an incredible card. Oh, Roxanne is an incredible card. We've all lost a lot of games to Roxanne over the years. We've all lost at least one game because we played Roxanne when we weren't allowed to. <laughs> Admit it, you've all done it. Let's see some flower selectings from Christian now. We put a couple energy back into the deck. The Lost Zone is at accounts now that we can start spending these Mirage Gates. Yeah, you got a Mirage Gate. That's why we dropped the Lightning Energy in the Lost Zone. It wasn't ideal, but you wanted your Mirage Gate. Here comes a Switch Cart. Another Comfey for another Flower Selecting. Ooh, Colrus. And Lost Vacuum. It's frustrating that it's up against Vacuum, yeah, because you want to get rid of this heavy baton if you can. Oh, yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're looking to take a KO this turn, and you've got to be looking to take KO this turn, it's you so do rough not that it's want up against that heavy baton. Yeah, it's so rough that it's up against Chorus, and I think Christian's right to value the Lost Vacuum this highly. Yeah, it's the right choice, but it's another one of those choices which is incredibly awkward. You do Now there goes a the Hooper. Yeah, we have double Mirage Gate in hand, so we can gate to retreat this Confei and still get Darkness Energy onto this Hooper EX. I believe there's still enough non-Darkness Energy in the deck to do that. There's, yeah, there's, a, there's at least one Psychic, so we're good in that regard. Yeah. It, yeah, so here we get the energy on there, the energy on the Hooper. Second Mirage Gate will get the second Darkness on Hooper. Yeah. We've got the response KO, and Lost Vacuum will get rid of that heavy baton, which is huge. And Christian's finally going to start responding here in a big way, as you said, at least in prize cards, but also the fact that you're removing energy for good with this baton being removed. Christian's also going to load that Iron Hands up a little bit closer towards Ampy very much, so they can maybe capitalize on Miraidon later down the line. Yeah, that could be a nice two prizes, of course. Gusting unavailable for Christian right now. Boss's orders is gone. Prime Catcher is stuck in the prizes. Christian doesn't know that he's probably not going to draw into it for a while. He is just hoping. Now, here comes the Lost Vacuum. Yep. Gets rid of that heavy baton, which never seems to work. It just <laughs> makes your opponent spend a bunch of resources. Here comes the Hooper for the giant KO, taking your first two prizes and removing all four energy off of the board. 
but there is a response potentially coming from Kim. This is not a game ender yet. It's still a huge energy crush, and it's exactly what Christian needs to do to stay in the game. Gonna just slightly bank her water energy to end the turn on a Confe, just in case this Hooper EX does get KO'd. Let's see if Kim can guarantee the way there. Well, yes, Arvin can get Techno Radar for a couple more Iron Crown. There is bench space for them now. Yeah, and, that, and that's all you need here. You need two Iron Crown. You'll then be hitting 220 with Arm Press. That is the KO. And Christian, it, it isn't like the old Mewtwo Wars. Iron Hands doesn't KO Iron Hands <laughs> unless you're playing a whole bunch of damage modifiers, which Christian isn't. It is going to be awkward to get a response KO on that Iron Hands. It's going to take Roaring Moon or a recovered Hooper in order to do it. But then you're asking for Mirage Gate and there's a little, well, I mean, two were played just last turn. It's Kim debating using the Iron Bundle here instead of Iron Crown, keeping the Hooper EX in play. I don't like that. Here comes the Arvin. I, I do think there's still two Crown within the deck. There is one prize, but I think we're still fine. I don't think we've discarded any this game. Don't remember discarding any. I can get discarded. Any. I think there is still two Crown EX, so I think we're fine. As well. I feel like we, yeah, yeah we're just going to take go. out the Hooper EX. That seems relevant. Just keeping tabs on that Iron Bundle is reasonable because it can be another game ender for you later down the line. Oh, absolutely. It can be a very, very nice card. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, next turn, you can just push something to the bench and then KO. Although, to be honest with you, you're going to have one prize remaining. And right now, anything on Christian's side of the board is in arm press range yeah. because of those free Iron Crown. Yeah, we're in great shape. Thanks to the Arvin guaranteeing, we're even going to see the future boost energy capsule committed, and it's going to be the arm press for the KO. Thanks to the triple iron crown on the bench, Kim goes down to just one prize card remaining in this game three. How can Christian respond here? And one, Im yeah, go on. I was going to say one important point to note: there's only one lost vacuum in the list, and it's gone. That yeah. heavy baton, probably safe. Although something you've mentioned several times, I'm going to be the one to mention it this time, Joe. <laughs> Frenzied gouging. You can do it, yeah. But then again, you could just KO with Marauder over single energy if that That's happens. So maybe that doesn't even work either. I love Kim's position here. You've set yourself up so that you are going to have something to attack with next turn, and be able to potentially finish this out. Um, we do see an Iron Bundle from Christian here. I think we just have to thin the deck. I think yeah. we just have to find Roxanne. Without Roxanne, Christian really doesn't have much of a hope this turn. Kim's hand is too large, and we know there's a lot of supporters in there. And those supporters can work all sorts of ways to the end of the game. Yeah. Christian needs a lot. You need like you said, Ross, he has to reload some attackers with Mirage Gate. Well, we're just really being hopeful. Two not great cards here. No, well, I think, haven't we already lost Zone, the only Pokemon V? Yeah, we, it was Hooper up against the Raikou. Yeah, so, so having to take a Buddy Buddy Poffin doesn't feel great, but, it, you know, <laughs> they're both as dead as each other, really, at this point. Yeah, they're both terrible cards, but the, the, you literally cannot use the, um, the Forest Seal Stone there. It does mm. nothing for you. Now, here we get the Poker Gear. We're looking for a supporter of some description. Uh, I don't it's Chorus, but it's not Roxanne. Not That's what, you're what we wanted for. here. Really had to disrupt Kim a little bit more than this, I think. We have will at least get five more cards to try and cobble something together. But and it feels like Kim's board state is just so strong now. No, it's a very strong board state. You still haven't even seen a super old from Christian, which we're going to need to... I mean, it's got to be Hooper, I suppose, is the easiest one to go for here. It's, it doesn't feel good, but I think it's got to be Hooper. The, time being, but if you don't get rid of the heavy baton, then you're just getting a return code immediately anyway. The five cards aren't that phenomenal either. I don't see any Mirage Gate there. Can we lower our hand size enough for Mew EX to possibly panic draw us a card here or there? Now, there is a Mirage Gate in the prizes, and we've definitely seen two get played. Is a fourth one definitely available? It must be. I mean, if Christian's still playing, it's got to be. We can still see a few more cards. We can retreat this Confe and see another two. Christian going to take the time to quickly burn a Buddy Buddy Poffin and have a look at what's remaining. Well, yeah, there's definitely Mirage Gate available. Yeah, there's no one. energy in the deck, so you have to find it alongside Super Odd. We you need Super Odd for whatever you're attacking with so anyway, true. probably. And Ball Search. We need so many cards here. <laughs> oh, and the problem... And that's the thing, right? Even if we... Well, let's assume Christian gets a Hooper. Well, the Heavy Batter is just going to move the energy to 
benched iron hands and you've already got the free iron crown down yes. so arm press for the win or you use roaring moon to frenzy gouging but then you just attach one energy to maraidon and that gets a ko and that's yeah. the win so well, even if you get the ko well we have mirage gate is there anything that christian can come up with now definitely taking their time they know their backs against the wall here I have to make sure they have thought about every option so many different attacking pokemon in the deck list don't think there are many defensive lines you can take here though Ross, I think Kim's position is just too strong. There's no gusting. The only way you can do is Iron Bundle. But yeah, if you Iron Bundle, that's what's going to happen. Kim's not falling for that one. <laughs> no, that Iron Crown's got free retreat. You can Iron Bundle and hope your opponent puts the wrong Iron Crown active. That is not currently working. Now we do see the Roaring Moon hit the bench, but I don't know. Well, we definitely don't have the energy right now. We've not seen a Super Rod yet. But importantly, it has 230 hit points. So maybe that's the sponge of the turn. It would force a future... It would force... Yeah, there's a heavy baton attached, right? So yeah. you know that the Iron Hands is limited to 220. An Iron, an iron yeah, Bundle can be Moon EX coming into the active position. We can then Mew EX for one card. Is it Super Rod? I don't know. Uh, no, no, it's not it's Super Roxanne Rod. for next turn. So you're just really hoping to sponge a hit here with your Roaring Moon EX. This is the only thing Christian can do to be safe this turn your highest hit point basic, holding on by just 10 hit points right now, and passes back over to Kim. Can they close the game out here? Well, here's a professor's research to find out. What can we see here in terms of cards? What are we looking for in order to try and get this? Well, no prime catcher. That was what we were really <laughs> looking for, honestly. It <laughs> was a would prime have been catcher. lights out. Um, not seeing anything there that's game ending. Annoyingly, Iron Bundle would be game ending, but you Board don't have full. the bench space. Yeah. Future Booster Energy Capsule would be game ending, but you don't have a, a space to put the tool on. So I think, yeah, you poke with Maraidon and go, you're still not winning next turn, and I've just taken away the one option you had for sponging. Yeah, I think this is about as good as it gets for Kim. If you can't win this turn, let's swing, hit for 120 with our peak acceleration. Get an extra energy or couple out of the deck for the next Iron Hands. And I think Kim is edging closer and closer to the victory here. He knows he is right on the door, on the precipice of getting his first victory of a high tier event. Yeah. The Bologna it, SPE. It doesn't feel like Christian got any closer to winning there. It feels like Christian just elongated our finals by a turn. <laughs> got to respect it. You've got to play to these outs. There's oh. Roxanne in hand now, Ross. Oh. There may be even more lines available. Oh, absolutely. And these Lost Zone decks have a lot of tricks. But this is the kind of thing where even something like Sableye, potentially, you know, like Sableye plus a Prime Catcher onto Iron Crown. That would be yep. such a fun play. It's not coming out because the Prime Catcher is prized. Yep. But something like that would be so much fun here. Try and set up a ridiculous four prize turn. Frenzied Gouging is now off the table. No, you that's lose. it. And Christian we do see the, the hand. And Kimber Vega is your Bologna Special Event Champion with your Iron Crown Iron Hands deck, which makes me very happy indeed. Congratulations to Kim. What a fantastic final. Back and forth in all three games. You can see what it means to